Hey, what's up? This is Joshua. Hey, this is Dave. Hey, what's going on? This is Brandon. You're now tuned in to PVD Horror. You're now tuned in to PVD Horror. Don't you have anything good? Never leave home without it. On the top of the charts. Turn a space in your heart. This is Tom Atkins. You're thrilling me. You are now listening to PVD Horror! This doesn't make any sense! All these horror movies you watch, does death, death, death make sense? No, it's not about sense, it's about death. been doing it for like a year and a half guys you think we'd have it down by now i think we got it down no yeah. work in progress work in progress <laughs> all right guys welcome back welcome back going on mm-hmm. little brandon this is your sequel right we had gone into and i put it for my slept on but last week and so i noticed that dave did the first film of the howling yeah. for his slept on film and then i was just like you know what i think the, the sequel is better all right, so we're keeping with this season two theme and we're going with the sequels here. Looking at this one, we're looking at Howling 2 as our as our sequel for this episode. Brandon, talk to me. Tell me why you feel like this sequel is better than the original. That was a joke. I like the original, but I think that the <laughs> sequel was that 80s vibe where everything was just fun, you know, with all those films where it really didn't take itself serious and you can just chill and just like enjoy a film, you know? That's why I like films like that. Just remind me of that 80s vibe. Nice. Um, what did you think about it, Josh? I had watched it a long time ago, and I don't remember it, really. I remember the blonde uh, with the big hair. We were just talking about that. But, you know, in the, especially <laughs> in the in the 80s, man, the big blonde-haired, big-boobed girl uh, who can't act. They were so interchangeable mm-hmm. that I couldn't, for the life of me, remember who it was. And then Dave was telling me, you know, obviously we were talking about what she was in. And I, I was like, so she hasn't done anything else? <laughs> so Sybil Danning is the actress's name and she was in such fine movies as Reform School Girls and Chained Heat. So I don't know, Josh, I'm kind of going to argue with that and say, she, I think she went on to some great things right there. <laughs> yeah, it's a stellar career. <laughs> it's one of those movies where you enjoy it when you watch it. Yeah. Kind of like uh, Chud 2. You know, it's okay. one of those things. I loved it when I watched it, but then after I watched it, I totally forgot what I just watched. Yeah. <laughs> What of the chud? <laughs> Josh, a, I wonder. Bud. I wonder what you'll say to Sybil Danning when she's our guest um, in our next podcast episode. Uh, I would probably say, you know what? I'm glad you made a paycheck in the '80s, but you were very interchangeable with every other big boobed, blonde haired woman that was in a movie. <laughs> like, yeah, it, look at the time. Look at the time. Like every horror movie had a big boobed. Big haired blonde girl. I think that's just how they looked back then, man. They, they just made them different back then. I think. I, yeah. I will say uh, nowadays you can get a variety and a spice of life. Like, there's. And they make girls different nowadays. Yeah, thank God. Like it's not the same <laughs> woman on every cover. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I, I say cover like I'm in the movie store. They're all the same woman on this cover. You're talking about your cover of Vanity Magazine, right? <laughs> Vanity you Magazine. Me. All right. All right. So we are encouraging everybody to check out Howling 2. That is our sequel of the episode, our favorite sequel. So check it out. Give us your thoughts. We'll have that post up this this Saturday and you guys can uh, let us know what you think. This is in reporting live on PBD Akara. This is Horror News. All right. So we talked about this serial a lot on the past few episodes you know so general mills is set to create this monster mash theme for 50th anniversary of their cereals like the count chocolates and uh frankenberry and all that stuff so they're all gonna be mixed together josh i know that you're a big fan of those cereals what do you think of having every all three mixed together what do you how do you feel i'm allergic to chocolate that is the dumbest idea ever <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're screwed. The uh yeah, I I can't eat Count Chocula. Uh, but I used to mix the blueberry and the Frankenberry all the time. 
Dude, yeah. that's genius. Yeah. That is genius, Josh. Yeah, I did it before it was a thing. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's crazy. You know, it's the 50th anniversary. So it, it took this long for them to just mix all the cereals together and just make this <laughs> this <laughs> crazy shit. Well, they must um, have been looking at it and like, you know, we we already redid the boxes. What else do we do now? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Let's just put them all together, I guess. Because what else are we gonna do? Like, how many different options do you have for for cereal? Of like how you where you can go with it. Why don't they just feature a new monster and a new cereal? Like, well, who yeah. who do you think they can add to it? Um, there's no like uh, swamp Gilman or creature type thing. Wolfman or Wolfman, yeah, some some furry yeah. pieces in there. Wolfenberry, <laughs> Wolfenberry, <laughs> that fell in bed. Wolfman's Nards. <laughs> Put some of Josh's. Wolfman's Nards. <laughs> My son and I were just talking about that movie today. Imagine that. I'm just I'm glad that we're talking about cereal and Josh and I are actually talking about the right type of cereal this time. <laughs> Last time we were it was about serial killers, and me and Josh thought you were talking about tasty cereals. I'm on the right path. So Faces of Death is set to get a reboot. The original film released in 1978, which caused controversy in the film industry because people were thinking that there was a film with real killing. Josh, have you seen this? Yeah, I got them all. Uh, well, I got the first three on VHS. That That's just it. It wasn't real. So no, yeah. the, uh, it was that and Traces of Death. And yes. some of it was. Some of it was like Traces was real. I don't understand why they would redo that because yeah. you can just go on the internet and see real murder 24-7. At the, it's, hard, it's harder to find than you think. Uh, you know what? I have to monitor Max's YouTube because... Uh, he, he gets on there and at 10 years old, he, he's looking up superheroes or whatever. And then the next thing you know, he puts in a fight scene and it's guy getting stabbed to death. You know what I mean? Sweet. So it comes up easier than people think. Faces of death. Back in the day when I was a kid in the 80s, it was like, oh, this dude got faces of death. Like, yeah. And then everybody would run over, you know, all the tape traders back in the day would run over his house and try to get a bootleg of it just so they can see it or say they had it. You know, mm-hmm. that was the thing. I don't know why they would reboot it. So, I know. Dude, I rented, I rented all the Faces of Death like a thousand times from Major Video. I used to watch, me and my buddy used to watch those on like repeat. Yeah. We thought they were real. <laughs> yeah, there was, there was a lot of films out like that from a long time ago. So now it's just like, you know, like you resurface things and you try to put it all together and try to make a reboot. It's like, honestly, like how can you do it to... Yeah have that same presence from the from the first film oh it totally so, lo- loses yeah. the whole like essence of it because you know oh, no, you yeah. go in knowing that it's not real so it's the whole point yeah. of that of the phase of the death was like we really thought it was real and like there was a so i know that they would mix mm-hmm. in foreign scenes because some foreign scenes they could show s- certain things they could get away with showing certain things so it was like a mix some of it was super yep. fake but then some of it would they would mix to like a foreign country where they were killing like dogs i think was one in one of them or something the monkey the monkey was crazy because yeah. that i definitely thought that was real but i don't think that was real uh yeah. well they really ate monkey brains but i can't remember if they actually they didn't bash them. the monkey though oh <laughs> the bashing of the monkey was fake i believe if i remember correctly there was one josh do you know which one this was a guy like opens he's like i don't know what he's doing it's almost like he's at a will reading or something and he's like he all of a sudden he pulls out a gun and he, and everyone starts like freaking out and he's like wait wait I have something to say and then he just shoots himself because he panics. Do you remember that? Uh, I know what you're talking about, but I don't remember what it's in. Like, it's I one of the se- it's in one of the sequels or maybe it was a trace of the death. But that scene stuck with me. I was always like, wow, that was super real. I do believe that was real. Not that we condone. What is it? Uh, we don't promote suicide on this podcast. No, not however. at all. I just no. as a kid, I was very curious. Yeah, they, yeah. The uh, the morbidity of it was what got everybody. Yeah. And I remember the scene distinctly. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was another gunshot scene, but I think that was traces of death. That was traces of death, where they put a guy in a bag and shot the guy in the bag or whatever. Oh, I think I remember that scene. To be honest with you, yeah. You know, I can't like when they say they're gonna remake. It's always like the remake that no one wants. No. Uh, do you remember what was it? The guinea pig series. Yeah. That was yep. in Japan, and it was super huge. Flowers of Flesh and Blood was the big one. It was like a snuff film style. Yeah, and uh, it wasn't real, obviously, but it, for the time, 
it looked amazing. And I got the bootleg uh, from like Europe or something uh, or Asia when I used to get the bootlegs. They remade that with obviously way better special effects, but no one watched it because it wasn't the original. So the hardcore, hardcore fans watch it and then just shit on it anyway. And like, why, why would you make it again when you know no one really cares anymore? You know what I mean? Like, but even it's kind of like the same thing, like how um, with the Cannibal Holocaust and then like Eli Roth made Green Inferno. You know, going into that film, you know it's going to be totally different. You look back at it and it's just like, oh yeah, well that hype from Cannibal Holocaust has kind of died down. Now Green Inferno is coming on. And it doesn't it doesn't have the same to it, you know what I mean? Excitement and everything like that because you're like, all right, well, they can't do the same thing they did with the turtle in this film. So it loses that film that everything had from following up. Yeah. So did I tell you guys about how I was trying to find really extreme graphic gore recently and I couldn't find videos of it? Ooh, so it, was, it was a it was a work thing. I was trying to find videos to show some someone. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I was trying to expose them to it. And mm-hmm. um I was able to find a lot of pictures, really graphic pictures. They yeah. were very disgusting, but very cool. Then I tried looking up videos and I was like, oh, I remember some sites that I used to go to when I was younger, like bestgore.com. You know, those sites don't exist anymore. Oh, they, yeah. And most of them probably were taken down. Yeah. Yeah. Probably- and actually, if you go to bestgore.com, there's a video on there. And then the guy explains how he had to take the rest of his site down because of, you know, whatever legal issues he ran into. But then I did find something and then I realized shortly after that I was getting, I was treading into some water I probably didn't want to get into with websites that were like, I don't know. I just felt like it was, I was going into some weird territory. So I just ended up being like, nah, you know what? Actually, this search is done. I'm not going to be able to find (laughs) these videos. But yeah, if anyone does have any uh, websites they can tell me about, let me know. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, I can't. We can't go to Dave's house now. He's flagged by the FBI. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> dark web here. Yeah. There was some site. I mean, I don't know what I was getting into, but there was like you had to you had to like apply to become a member. And then they had all these rules about like how anything goes. You just can't. No pet killing, I think, was one of the thing. Mm-hmm. It was it seemed like weird. So I was like, no, I'm not going to not going to do this. I think that's Josh's other group page. It was run by someone called Chuckles. <laughs> oh, oh, don't throw me in that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, no, don't you don't know in. that guy, do you, Josh? Nope, nope. Never <laughs> heard of him before in my life. I don't want the FBI knocking on my I'm already on like the uh what is it, the fly list or whatever. The fuck? Yeah. Yeah, I got I'm since 9-11, I I'm flagged. So I can't even uh, I have the special treatment <laughs> going to the airports and shit. So you're the weirdest uh, I don't want dude. Any more shit. Shut the hell up. <laughs> You're the weirdest dude. You can't go to New Jersey. Next. On a, a... Oh, I'm just on the special list for the... So that... it's a, you know what? Let me just finish this because <laughs> this is getting out of hand. <laughs> All right. So the documentary series In Search of Darkness is set to film part three. You know, they just released part two a few weeks ago. Have you guys checked that out yet? I didn't see part one yet. I did what not. Fuck you guys waiting? Oh, oh my god! I I did the Sunday night streams. What month or something? Two yeah, months it was ago? last month because so we the first just, one. It was for our episode yeah. one of the season. Yeah, I was supposed to be on your to do list. I know, I know. It's Four like... hours long, but you know, they're great films. But yeah, so um, they released uh, I think it was on Twitter. They released a post, and they were kind of like looking for like fans' input on like who would you like to see us interview. What would you like us to talk about? I think they covered a lot of films in the 80s. And I think that, you know, like for us, like how we took that time through the pandemic and like dived more into more 80s films, you know, there's so many films that they can cover and like kind of the films that we have been also like putting down for like our Sunday night streams and slept on. So some of the lower budget films, I wouldn't mind seeing like a Moonstalker, like them talking about that a little bit. But yeah, I can't even talk to you guys about it because you guys still have not seen the first two. So if I even said, hey, what films would you guys want to put down? You guys would probably say something that they already touched on. So. Did they touch on Deadly Manor? Uh, I don't think so. There you go. What about 555? No. Uh, dude, they... I could run through some 80s horror like there's it's nobody's business. No. All right. So is this is a documentary about 80s horror? Yeah, they kind of just touch on everything from uh, 
all the films and like special effects and everything like that. No, the, the second one focused on that a little bit more. They had uh, Savini talking about a few things. So I thought it was a pretty cool take. It's kind of like that VH one's behind the music, you know, like remember, remember yeah. that show? Yeah. So it's like they'll pick a film and then they start to run, do a rundown. And then they have like a lot of people just talking about it from people that work at like Shudder or like Fangoria. And then, um, even some some actors that talk about it, give their input about the film and their experiences watching it and how it holds up till today. I think you guys would definitely like it. So, Did they interview Sybil Danning of Halloween 2 and Chained Heat fame? No, not yet. Oh, that's they, should. Good. they should. Part three. They should. <laughs> Part three. <laughs> up on Twitter and get that in there. Hi, Brandon. Hi, Dave. Oh, There's- Max. Hi. Max, be quiet. We're recording. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, Max. Nah, you don't have to be quiet, dude. <laughs> live like live, okay, live your I'll life, little bro. Guys, well, I'm gonna keep talking. <laughs> okay, sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Go to your room. <laughs> oh he boy, just, he just flipped you off. Oh, you let that happen, Josh? What kind of dad are you? <laughs> dude, I, I've been single dad for like rude, weeks. I, so I, I see how like shit goes weird. down when Miranda's not yeah, home. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. See? So, uh, or it is, huh? Yeah, so we wrapped up our news. Don't hit that snooze button. It's time for Slept On Saturday. Looking at our Slept On Saturday posts. So I'm going to go first with my pick. Uh, This was about a week ago. I picked the film Psycho 2. So this one is just continuing that Norman Bates story. Pretty much after he gets out of the mental hospital for, you know, the events that happened in part one. I thought that Anthony Perkins in this film, at first I was like, oh man, this is like kind of cheesy. But he, he is like, he just turns it on and off so well. And like, he just kind of plays the role flawlessly. He's like this, like, like a super like scrawny guy, but like, he just goes from like meek and like reserved to intimidating and like scary really quick. I think the best, the thing I enjoyed the most about this film, because it was kind of out there, there was definitely some like twists that seemed a little silly, but I thought they had some really cool kills actually, which surprised me because I didn't expect that for a psycho. So there was like one scene where somebody gets like a, a kitchen knife, he falls on it and like, it goes straight into his mouth. Um, but they like show it really well. So I just, you know, it was a, you know, just a couple of scenes like that, that kind of took me for a, a little bit of a surprise because it wasn't what I was expecting. And overall uh, just, it was entertaining, kind of cheesy, but you know, an entertaining film. Definitely some interesting aspects to the character. So I look forward to uh, checking out the third and fourth because I haven't seen any of the rest of the sequels. So, um, yeah, that was my slept on pick. And I definitely think people should check it out because I feel like I never hear anyone talk about part two. Um, nah. So, yeah, either you guys seen this? Yeah, I seen it a long time ago. Def- like you said, it's definitely kind of underrated and no one talks about it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I think the the full series and everything is just is great. I did hear that the third one was really good. I don't know if that's if that was accurate. So I'm looking forward to checking out the third one. But what is there like four in total, right? Uh, the third one was I think that was the one where they went incestual with them and him and his mom. It was like uncomfortable to watch. Cool. Like you're watching it and then like she's like leaning over and playing with them and stuff and you're like what the fuck but all the cycle movies are really good i have the box set dave i'll let you borrow it they're actually they're all streaming oh are they yeah well this was on demand um but i i'm pretty sure three and four are on demand as well so i was planning on checking these out pretty soon the thing with the psycho film series they're all like really good slasher films and you know what it was part four that was the um the one where he was the kid. So part three was the Anthony Perkins wasn't in that one. Oh. Uh, I forget who was in it, but somebody else was in it. I think it was the lawnmower man, the guy who played Fahey? the lawnmower. Yeah, yeah, I'll Jeff, go with that. Is it Jeff Fahey? I think so. Each one of those is a solid slasher. Yeah. Together, like using the Norman Bates name, a lot of people had a problem with it because they're like, this isn't psycho. 
You know what I mean? But um, yeah, each individual movie separately is solid by itself. I mean, and nowadays you see people making sequels that are like, you know, so far from the original that doesn't we don't even bat an eye at it. Um, no. I actually forgot there's five of them. So there's Psycho One, Two, Three, Four, and then Psycho Sisters, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that's it is. a that's one of the films in the series, I believe, right, Josh? Oh, yeah. Well, there is, they did a remake of the original Psycho, which was like uh, we don't we don't need to talk about that. Yeah. But uh, the part two was pretty good, Dave. I recommend, I definitely recommend it. Cool. Yeah. For those of you who have only seen the remake of this film, you have to check out the original if you have never. The remake has like zero energy, zero chemistry, which is too bad because it's got a, a great cast. I mean, you got young Vince Vaughn and and Hesh, is that her name? And it's directed by Gus Van Sant, who is an amazing director, but... Yeah, just they did, it, they did it frame by frame. And even with that, it just it lacked all the I don't know, all the energy from the first film, I guess, would be what it is. I don't know what it what it's missing, but there's something missing from that film. So, so yeah, that's my pick. All right. That brings me to my slept on, which is the day after tomorrow, which I caught some slack about from <laughs> my wife. Uh, who actually posted on our page that she did not think that the day after tomorrow was a horror movie. So I was like, it's apocalyptic horror. It's a real genre. And uh, she looked it up and she's like, eh, is it? So the day after tomorrow is very scientifically inaccurate, but a new ice age comes and freezes the top half of the planet. And New York is the prime area it's focused on new york which is really funny because the dad is on in scotland or something and all of a sudden he's in the united states and he makes his way from pennsylvania to new york in uh you know minus 130 degrees all the way through like straight with no problem everyone else dies he's fine like what so it doesn't really make sense but scientifically it makes absolutely no sense but it's a fun movie to watch you know, having it turn negative 130 in 10 seconds is pretty frightening. And everyone freezing to death is pretty scary. So uh, that was my pick. Day after tomorrow, apocalyptic horror. Shout out Jake Gyllenhaal. I take it you guys didn't watch it? I've seen it. That's, oh, that's the a theaters. great movie. I love it. Really? Yeah, I love that movie. Yeah. I did not expect that from you guys. I'm glad you like it. I picked one that you guys like. I mean, yeah, I'm not going like, to say it's my favorite film, but it, it's a good film. It's good for yeah. that genre. I, I enjoy a good apocalyptic, uh, apocalyptic movie every now and then. Yeah, I thought that one was uh, one of the better apocalyptic so, movies. Jo- Josh, you forgot a key factor of why you picked this movie, because I don't think this is a typical uh, Josh pick. Oh, yeah, wasn't it? It was Earth Day, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's right. And that's why I picked it, because it was Earth Day. And I, I wanted a horror movie that encompass the earth so i picked an apocalyptic horror movie that i really like nice so. rajol good job yay happy earth day <laughs> happy earth day last month <laughs> <laughs> last month <laughs> all right that wraps up our slept on saturday sunday night streams I picked Orca. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that came out, what, 79? Something like that. I, I forget when it came out. It looks really 70s, the grainy film quality. Obviously a ripoff of Jaws. They were totally cashing in on the Jaws, like the afterbirth. Let's face it, everyone tried. But this movie really stands out because the uh, killer whale, obviously the guy wanted to capture the killer whale, but killed his wife and his child, not for the squeamish. If you love animals, don't watch this film. I watch it with my wife and she was like, this is terrible. So that scene is really tough, but it's also a revenge film. And I love revenge films. The orca goes absolutely crazy and destroys anything and everything. It even had, uh, what was her name? Uh, Bo Derek in it. And she got her leg ripped off, which was really awesome. But Bo Derek, I don't think was super popular at the time, but she was the... So she was the under 
underling. A killer whale walked into a, um swim swam into a pipe and then um a building exploded somehow. Yeah, Josh, there's Max at that point. Defense. Yeah, <laughs> good thing Max is here to tell me. Kids say the darndest things, don't they? He needs to help me out with all my horror movies because I I have so much useless knowledge that it blends together. So yeah, the orca takes out the town, and then there's the the scene at the end with the hunter versus the whale. And uh, then the hunter gets punted. And the hunter gets punted. Thanks, Max. And then so and the 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 scene at the end, like big spoiler here, the the whale after he's avenged his family and wreaked havoc on humanity and gotten the guy who killed his family, he swims under the ice to commit suicide. And for another species, not only to lose, like you really feel for the whale if this like because he he loses his wife his child and then he's like i have no purpose in life and he swims under the ice and that's it and it's really creepy that there's another species of animal on the planet that is smart enough to realize that they lost their family and commit suicide like yeah best best like one of the best animal horror movies of all time in my opinion all right what do you guys think sounds i mean you got me sold here i've never seen check it out no i haven't seen it it's great. <laughs> yeah, all right, you guys got me sold. <laughs> we're all where I'm here for it. So now what's this streaming on, Josh? Um, I think I rented it on Amazon. Oh, okay. It was on Amazon Prime, but I don't think it's on Prime anymore. So I think we actually rented it. Okay. All right. Totally worth it. All right. Check it out. All right. So now I'm gonna jump into my Sunday night stream pick, which is the film Mother's Day. I had put this post down because I thought it was a really good film. And also this past Sunday was uh, Mother's Day. So it was our Mother's Day pick for our post. And um, I thought it was a great film. Like a couple of weeks ago, Joe Bob and Eli Roth actually featured this film for season three. thought it was a great film. I, have, I haven't watched it in a long time. I haven't seen like bits and pieces. And so being able to catch back up and watch this film, I thought it was like a really good film. Everything put together. It was co-written and produced by Charles Kaufman, which is Lloyd's brother. So it's a trauma film and it's a 1980s film. I thought it was kind of cool that uh, film shares a lot of the same locations as Friday the 13th. The house that they used to film in was actually a house that was in the woods like for 15 years prior to filming. The owner of the house was actually found dead. He was murdered in that house right before they were choosing that filming location. Cool. So the great characters, you know, you had Ike and Adley with the mom. They just doing some crazy shit, you know, sitting there watching this film with my kids. They're <laughs> just like, what the hell is this? <laughs> and you had to, they had to cover their eyes at a few times. Like, great. <laughs> it's a great film and it still holds up to this day. What do you guys think about it? Yeah, I'm a fan. I watched this a couple of years ago and yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was, it was fun. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just one of those '80s movies that kind of like you watch it and it's like this is exactly what I what I want to see yeah. when I'm when I'm watching it. It's like I, I want this like this cheesiness, the the woods, like so you got like that slasher vibe to it. The, the kid, the sons are like idiots and yeah. kind of like a little comic relief. Yeah, I just I really 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 enjoyed this film when I watched it, and I I missed the Joe Bob one, but it's still streaming, so I'm gonna go back and rewatch it because I gotta hear his commentary. Because I yeah. had a feeling it was probably going to be really good for this one. I remember the box at the video store down the road from where I used to live. And I remember looking at it all the time. I rented it once, but I don't remember anything about it. So that that's going back, you know, 1990, 92, yeah. or something, 93. Yeah. So uh, it's definitely on my rewatch list. So sweet deal. Josh, you had used the mom from this film in your... Uh throwdown yeah how did that how'd everything go a lot of comments so apparently it, it you know they didn't see it in the story too much but when they saw it on the post people really liked it she actually got like a few comments like i love mother's day you know so it, it was a good pick and i had asked you for help on that one because i was gonna do uh norman bates as his mom or something but i didn't i didn't want to use betsy palmer from friday the 13th because yeah i would win hands down against anybody so it was it, i was tossed so thanks also, for them on that one yeah also on mother's day that was the anniversary of uh friday the 13th so she would have won definitely hands down huh imagine that mother of mothers it's 
It's that time of the week where we highlight a unheard of, underrated, underground, independent, low budget gem, happily titled So Bad It's Good. <laughs> it is so bad it's good. That's me. So I picked one of my old school favorites, uh, Survival Island, for So Bad It's Good. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, it is the first killer pinata movie, and it's got a pretty decent cast. Like the guy that p- played Ensign Kim on uh, Star Trek Voyager, right once Voyager was over, this was like the first film he did, which is pretty sad but it's also amazing at the same time. And Jamie Presley was in it. And I don't think Jamie Presley gets a lot of attention that she should have. Like she was, she was obviously good looking, but I thought she was pretty talented and, you know, a B, B horror movie queen in her own right. Uh, but this movie itself was amazing. So there's a ancient curse, like these native American tribe or native tribe of whatever Island this is curses this, wooden doll and uh they throw it in the water and 100 years later it comes out comes to life and kills all the teens partying typical horror movie but this one is really unique because they had a guy in a suit but the guy uh the producers didn't think it was scary enough so they added cgi so you get this big awesome pinata monster running around killing people and the kills are pretty cool and then all of a sudden he just starts floating and he loses his legs and turns into a giant head and the people are running and he can fly, but he can't catch them. And it's all CGI on, on the ass end, which kind of ruins it, in my opinion. But the rest of the film is like so good that I, I have to recommend it. The story was good. The acting was pretty decent with their cast. The kills were great and the monster was cool. So there you go. I, I would assume... You guys watch this, and it's on your must-see list, right? <laughs> yeah, I've never seen that film in my life, but I have to check it out. I'm I'm open to it. Um, it it's definitely a film. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? For for one of the like stupider inanimate object horror movies, this one was actually pretty decent. It's it's got a lot more story than like Ginger Dead Man or or some of the other ones that are classic. And I don't know why this doesn't get the love that it deserves because I absolutely love this film so check it out it's Friday you ain't got no job and you ain't got shit to do it's bears and scares cool all right all right so that's going to bring us to our bears and scares. Uh, so I think this might be the first time in PVD horror history a movie is going to get mentioned twice. Or, or is this the first time? No, no. I think you, I think you, uh, you talked about this film before. Um, yeah, I know, but, but it, I'm afraid it's the first time we brought up a film twice because Josh accused me of stealing. His, oh his films yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> you stole a couple of my picks there, Brandon. That's true. Actually. Oh no, you're right, Brandon. It was a uh, toxic, uh, toxic zombies was the first yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. No, you're totally right. Never mind then. All right. So this is the second time in PVD horror history. So yeah, for beers and scares, uh, the film, 1988 film Slugs. Uh, my beer was foreign objects. Beer allergic to thoughts of Mother Earth which I'll describe why. So essentially it was the day after Earth Day. I wanted to do an Earth Day themed beer and movie. So I went with Slugs, an insect uh, movie. And this was my first time watch. And I know, Brandon, you talked about this. I think this was a slept on feature for you in our first season. And um, I definitely saw why. This is a super fun film. Uh, it does not take itself seriously. I mean, there's a close up of a freaking slug with teeth, and that is like <laughs> awesome. You know, it gets so bloody and disgusting. And they there's literally like a scientist in a lab at a high school who works literally all day. Like that scientist does not stop working. He is there at all day, all night. They just pop in and he's still there with his 
Bunsen burner and his beakers <laughs> and whatever else scientists have. It is hilarious. I felt really bad though when the hamster, I think it was a little hamster that gets eaten by one of the slugs. That made me yep. sad. So, oh, so just go into right. it knowing there is hamster death. That restaurant scene. What did you think about oh, that? I love the restaurant scene. That business. <laughs> oh, and that was that's actually why you featured it. It was one of your kills of the week. Yeah. And it was also my slept on also. Okay. So this is getting mentioned three times on our Yeah, it's a great film. It really is. So I totally recommend this. You know what? This is actually the perfect movie for beers and scares because what pairs best with this is being intoxicated. So having a couple of these these beers was perfect for it. Foreign Objects is out of New Paltz, New York. Really, really good stuff there. Really good beer. This is allergic to thoughts of Mother Earth. I thought that went well with the whole Earth Day theme. It was a 6.5. They describe it as a new American hoppy ale. Basically tastes like an IPA or a pale ale or something like that. Super tasty. Uh, They do now distribute to Rhode Island. So if you're from Rhode Island, you can definitely get the stuff at the stores. Just got to look around a little bit. And yeah, that's my beers of scares. Nice. For those of you who love the written word, we have the book of the week. Book of the week. All right, so that brings me to the book of the week. Uh, it seems like I'm taking over today. I haven't been posting a lot lately. You know, I had a lot of stuff going on, but now I am back. People have asked me specifically to post about books uh, because I read a lot. So really? people yeah. ask you that? Yeah. Yeah. People, people you know other than me and Brandon? Shut up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> was it uh i was talking to laura we messaged each other and i was thinking of doing a book club and she's like well you haven't been posting a book and then um she called uh, you out yeah and and, uh, one of our other followers nina um her and her mother tina are both fans and they they said something to me like how come you haven't been posting about books and sean mcdonough who was on the thing we were we, we were talking and he also he likes the books and he likes the stuff. So I was like, you know what? I need to post more books. I have a question for you. What is it? Why haven't you been posting any books? <laughs> oh, come on. See? that Everybody like... No, it sounds like nobody actually asked you to post books. They're actually just calling you out for not doing it. Yeah. Yeah. They were like, you know what? Like, you're a snacker. The other guys are posting all their shit. And you're not doing anything. You, you call yourself a book club moderator? I don't think so. You're not even posting about books. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, so anybody listening, I might put up a survey. I actually, I'm seriously considering doing a PBB horror book club. So that might be in the works for the future. So anyway, that brings me to the book of the week, uh, The Swarm which is by Arthur Zerhog. He, this book is very scientific, tons of information about bees. And at that time, it was the killer bee the pandemic. The African bees were the big thing back in the late 70s, early 80s. All the bee movies, it was like his, hysteria. And this book really capitalized on that. A lot of people give it a lot of hate. There's not so much the bees killing people it's more the science of the bees moving into the United States and taking over and completely decimating the economy and killing animals and the lack of food. And if it was real, this is what would really happen. And uh, it was very 1950s, like sci-fi monster movie where they were like, oh, I'm a girl. Hey, hot girl, you be in our group to help kill the bees. And I'm a scientist. Oh, join our group. Like it was one of those hodgepodge, you know, got the adventurer, the cop, the scientist and the hot girl that have no reason to be together whatsoever, but they all fight these super awesome book, super well written the film based on it, not as good as the book. And I was really taken back because I forget, like there's a scene towards the end of the book where somebody's on the world trade center. And then I read it and I had to reread it because I I forget that the World Trade Center had stood there for so long because it is obviously not there anymore. So that was real eye opener that, you know, it was such an iconic thing. So I definitely recommend The Swarm if you're into old school monster movies and 
into science and having books make sense. So really good stuff. Also, how you brought up there was a film on that book. One of the guys from the Guts podcast had commented on on your post and was saying, hey, my dad was actually in this film and it was fucking terrible. But um, yeah. I think he played he said he played the guy that was like stung to death or something like that. I was going to message him and I totally forgot about it. Yeah. Um, you know, Max has been quarantined the past couple of weeks. So I have it's been really tough to really do anything because I'm sitting down with them all day doing schoolwork. But I don't even know who posted it. And I meant to reach out to them and I totally different. Uh, yeah, I different. guess, the, I I guess the film was uh, it was filmed in. Um, Houston, Texas. Hey, I have to check it out. All right, don't don't check it out. It's they say it's bad for a reason. <laughs> I want to see how bad it is. <laughs> <laughs> Whose dad was it? I'm thinking it was probably Austin. I'm not sure. Uh, I'll have to I'll have to reach out to those guys and check it out. Did you wrapped up, Josh? <laughs> what? Did you wrap oh, up? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I'm like devouring my food. Yeah, man. I'm good. Okay. You All guys right. don't know how to read, so there's no way you read that book, right? <laughs> Please, I read all the fucking time. <laughs> That's all I fucking do is read. I'm reading you like a book right now, and you're pissing me off. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> it's not, it's not good. It just sounds yeah, good. Do like a, a Zoom meeting and do like a the book club on Zoom. There you go. Oh, that's a good idea. Boom. And then everyone can just ask you why you're not posting about books. <laughs> Where's the book? <laughs> Where's the book? Loving you is easy because you're beautiful. It's follower pick of the week. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So, we're going to move on to our follower pick. So, this is the post every week that starts off with a vote in our story, which is usually on Wednesday mornings. We ask you a question. You will give us your response. It gets po- reposted, and then we come up with our majority winner, which we announce on Thursdays. So for this one, uh, we just had Cinco de Mayo. So the question we asked our followers was, what's the best film to watch on Cinco de Mayo? I assumed we were going to get some Mexican horror films, which I think we got a couple. But our winner ended up being, to my surprise, From Dust Till Dawn. Which, you know, after I thought about it, I was like, oh, yeah, it's actually a pretty good pick. Uh, not one that even was remotely in my head. Um, so that's why I like these questions is sometimes people will, like, come out with some really, like, outside the box picks. And um, I thought that they did a really good job with determining this one. Um, yeah. I'm trying to remember some of the Mexican horror picks that they did say. Um, geez, they are escaping me. Um <laughs> Demon versus Dracula and Wolfman. Yes. Yes, Josh. Um, all right. So um <laughs> just a shout out to uh I'm gonna say this wrong. Lil Antha 13 and ECW Dude 17 uh for their write-ups on why they picked from Dust Till Dawn. Uh great pick uh for that one. And you know, if you guys want to participate, make sure you guys check out the vote on wednesdays it, up in our story so uh what did you guys do for cinco de mayo i had mexican twice so i had mexican tacos for lunch at Tallulah's in providence and then i had uh some mexican food at home for dinner made some margaritas nice and then i had some school shit so how about i know you got you uh did it up huh yeah i, I cheated on you guys i went to our spot <laughs> uh, on the border some yep. uh fucking five dollar margaritas and uh had my chimichungas you know? <laughs> yeah i'm but, so mad at you you went out for mexican food you didn't even invite me hey it was a last minute thing <laughs> i mean josh you do keep calling them empaladas so <laughs> but hey, i've eaten mexican almost every day for like two you, weeks josh can you and, chew your food before you start talking again what? Can you chew your food before you start talking? <laughs> I'm eating my empaladas right now, dude. Empaladas. <laughs> they know what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Order it. But I also watched From Dust Till Dawn. Great, great. Did film. you watch it that night? Yeah. Oh man, I wanted to, and I couldn't find it streaming anywhere. And then you probably own it, I'm sure. Yeah, it's on HBO Max. Oh, I didn't even think to look there. 
You look at you, see? Dude, that's see? so funny. I literally looked on like every streaming site except for HBO Max. I didn't even think of it. And I just gave you my HBO Max information. Yeah, which I got to watch King Kong for, on, which was awesome. Yeah. And then I was trying to get weird into some uh, Heaven's Gate, that Heaven's Gate documentary for yeah. all you uh, cult fans out there. <laughs> Drink the Kool-Aid. Oh. Also, Dave, wasn't that movie uh, Tigers Are Not Afraid? Wasn't that yes. a Mexican movie? Yes, thank you for saying that. That's the one I was trying to think of. Tigers yep. Are Not Afraid. Um, and then the other one was that film We Are... Well, you've seen it, Brandon, because you let me borrow it, I think. We Are oh. What We Are or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. That was another one that was mentioned. That's a good film. Yeah, but none of those have Selma Hayek. No. And Danny Trajo. That had a great cast. Yes, it did. All right, so Brandon, you want to announce your your cosplay picks for the last couple of weeks? Yeah. All right. So I want to shout out Freddy Krueger and I, also Aussie Michael Myers for yeah. uh, their cool cosplay picks that they had featured. Like we said again, if you guys want to get into having your stuff posted on our page, hit up CVD Horror Killer Cosplay, or just tag us on our um pages, any platform we can find it check it out but we also love the participation to kind of keep this horror community going so yeah that uh that freddy krueger cosplay that was yeah. insane i like that one a lot so and a lot of cool cool cosplay has been coming through so yep love to see new faces and new people so because we've been getting wrapped up with the same people here and there but it's not that's not a bad thing but yeah we like to see some new faces out there yeah, for sure. Same with the uh, the F13 Friday, the Friday the 13th cosplay that we do every week on Fridays. So I had two new people up the last couple of weeks. I had Mick Pro Joe, Jason underscore Jason Voorhees and Cute But Psycho X. Uh, the, they did the last two weeks of our uh, F13s. So thank you. And, you know, I hope that people keep uh, tagging us on that on that F13 Friday hashtag because um yeah we got like a pretty decent amount of people that use it so it's kind of fun to be able to rotate through all those and you know kind of show different ones each week we we should do cosplay that's it nothing all right do cosplay. Yeah, <laughs> do cosplay. you leave my empaladas alone dude you're gonna make people yeah. sick <laughs> Also, I'd like to shout out D-Lo Draws for the Spoochie. <laughs> Spoochie. Spoochie. <laughs> I'd like to shout out D-Lo Draws for the Spooky Sketch Sunday uh, drawings that also we featured for his Mother's Day drawings. He did a little sketch of like Jason getting like a tattoo for his mom. Also Bart Simpson featuring Marge Simpson for uh, the Psycho. So check him, check him out. D-Lo Draws on Instagram. He has an Etsy shop. He sells cool drawings and has cool stickers and pins and T-shirts and more. Follow him. Tell him PVD Hara sent you. Yep. If you want his home address, just DM us. We'll give you that. Uh, his phone number, anything else. Oh, hold on. Also, congratulations to him, too, because he's expecting a child. Yay. Congratulations. Yay, babies. He's a genetic jackhammer. <laughs> well, that's a weird thing to say about your friend, but. All right. <laughs> what? That's what you say when you make babies. You're a genetic jackhammer. It's, it's a crazy thing to say, Josh. You sound like a crazy asshole as usual. As usual. <laughs> as usual. How, how are those ampalalas? <laughs> Dude, I made a whole tray of them. So like, like 10 of these things, I ate all 10. You're an empalada jackhammer. <laughs> right. My weight loss is going extremely well. <laughs> All right, so that wraps up this week's episode. For more podcast news and everything in your horror experience, check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, on our back catalog, cool interviews. Hit the link in our bio, and it will bring you to all our information, our Etsy shop, and we also have some new merch coming soon, so be on the lookout for that. All right, everyone, have a good night. Take it easy. They got fish tacos. Dude, their tacos are so fucking Taco Tuesday. So good, dude. Every oh, time I go there, I get like empaladas, enchiladas, and then the tacos. Empaladas. <laughs> and then everything there. Guy's just making up his own shit now. Yeah. Cool. The beginning. Oh, yeah, probably. Reform <laughs> school girls. Yeah, so. 
seen a bunch of adult movies. Adult movies. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. That's how you know you have a good career. Yeah, she's cool. <laughs> <laughs> You're such very, a like lovely fanboy, Dave. Very cool. Very cool. She's so cool. I like I like her style. Oh, I just want to sniff her dirty tissues. She was great in Chained Heat. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just do this? <laughs> I, can't, I can't talk about uh, this anymore. This is Joshua. Let's do a little bit more like, hey, what's up? This is Joshua. Oh. <laughs> Should I be like all like, yo, 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 this is Joshua. No. What the fuck? Oh, come on, man. I thought that was good. I've been watching uh, Will Smith lately. Oh, I'm God, dude. Will Smith. Yo, yo. What? So, all right. No killing, right? Whatever happens is up to you, but don't let your time run out. If I do. Game over. You lose. Actress. Um, any scene she's in is just really fascinating to watch, and I really enjoy working opposite her. Like we we play best friends in that, and just it's a delight to just play off each other in every scene. Uh, I feel like she's a very generous actress. And I'm in- again, that's another interesting one to see what people will think of it. I think this will be very much more in the vein of like, you either love it or you hate it. Yeah. Because it's more in the B-movie realm. A gin is a genie. Is it yes, a genie? it is. It's like, it is genie. I, they've changed the name, I think, now. I always forget what, what the final title is. But um, it is definitely... I think they changed the name because there's another movie with gin in the title. So, but there's it's a movie called Gin came out in uh that, that, like 86 or something yeah and there's another one that's coming out come out recently i think that also has it so they i think they're changing it now but it definitely is about a genie cool yes. so you know in a next year by the same time you're probably going to have a ton of more films on tubi for people to check out and all the other sites so that's pretty exciting for you so you got a lot of a lot of titles coming out, and I hope that you know maybe you can join us again after some of these movies release. For sure, been- this has been a blast, awesome. definitely. Awesome. <laughs> I just wanted to kind of be to throw it out there for some of our followers and listeners to kind of follow you on social media if you want to plug in some of your usernames, so people can follow you. I literally always say this: I'm shocking with social media, so the only one I have is Instagram. That's I properly post on. So okay. Sarah T Cohen. It's so it's the same as the acting name, just without any spaces. Is I think it's the same for Twitter as well, but I so rarely post on there. So if that's all you got, I have that. But Instagram is probably the best one to follow with. If you want updates with filming or anything like that, that's always where I post it. All right. Well, Sarah, thank you again for joining us. This was... Thank you, guys. Yeah. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for watching them all. It really means a lot. Like, I, I love the films that we make, and it's nice that you really took the time to take a watch of all of them. Yeah, it was was very fun. Very fun to do that. All right. So to all the listeners, make make sure you go check out these films. Cupid, Clown Doll, uh, Bad Nun. The list goes on. Sarah T. Cohen, check her films out. And uh, definitely keep a watch for all the upcoming films. Medusa sounds like it's going to be amazing. So can't wait to check that out. And uh, to everybody, have a good night. Take it easy. I tried to write movies such as, and I accidentally said, movies suck. <laughs> you don't want to say that. But... Yeah, I, don't, I think this is exactly why I shouldn't be allowed to do these things. Hang on, I'm going to have a sip of water. I, I've got to beat George here. <laughs> oh, and I'm like, mate, the only reason you're this critical is because they've done such a good job with what they have. You assume it's got more. Yeah, I, just, I just like that you said, mate. <laughs>